Okay, I'm just going to do a document here. It says to you, this next card player called a Tisha. I'm going to do a two days. So this is the first picture. So what you see right here, what is this installation process? We're getting the files ready, the project, making sure everything's in working order. And I'm going to drag over onto the screen too. Okay, GitLab. You can see that. Oh, I just lost my GitLab. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is the repository that's created. What we're focusing on today is a project of two pieces. There's two parts. It's actually like a nature system. It's assigning it. Function of how it's extensive. You see it's that in it. And it's about a 15 step or a 15 step process. So I'm just documenting how 15 steps. So I just did feature one. Essentially, all this getting the terminal ready to go. Oh, it's like all oh, my files. So, yeah, see you in the next one. Okay, this is my second feature added, which is the installation of two apps right here. One in my projects, project setting folder, uh, which is expenses. So, settings I had to add two apps. One's called receipts and accounts. That's where you see them here and here. And doing the terminal commands right here. So on to step three. So I just finished feature three, which was creating my models. So like my models have three classes, expense category, account, and receipt. Um, and um, I had to look up docu extra documentation on the Python documentation for how to implement a foreign key and always making sure you have to use the settings.authenticate user model. And I had the hardest time running the test because I would keep getting back, um, I think could not import receipt from my receipts model and that was mainly because or it was absolutely because i completely spelled the receipt wrong that's how i had it originally spelled receipt instead of the correct version of receipt but all is good now so down to number four this step had to be taking the models that i just created and registering in the admin folder in my receipts app just like this and ran the test and everything was good to go so on to step number five all right for, step, for this step i created my first function in the views folder and in order for me to do this i had to first import um, from my models my receipt class into my views and in this case it's going to be a function that is able to display all of the receipts and after I built this function, I then had to register it in my apps, or not my apps, uh, in my URLs, there we go. <laughs> so I took the function, which is called res receipts underscore list. I gave it a URL path. And actually before I even did this one, I had to register it on not the app itself for receipts, but the overall project itself, URLs, and I had to include a path or include, I uh, had to import include and then create the receipts path that now allows me to go into my URLs in my app itself and not have to type anything here. Um, it can just be assumed that this is already going to be receipts forward slash. And in this case, this is going to be my home. And then lastly, what I did is I created HTML called list.html in order to display um, a table with the appropriate. Um, uh, with the appropriate request being asked and that in this case it's just going to be this um, right there so this is my table and i'm looking to populate it with more information in the next couple steps so stay tuned okay nice and short for this one so for this one we just had to create a redirect functionality so i had to go to my overall project urls folder and import the redirect shortcut so that I could then create a function called redirect to home and input the name home because that's the URL path that I named back in my app itself receipts home that will then show this. So now that I've done it, I should be able to um, just enter the normal URL once I run my server and we go to and there we are so just by going to 
the localhost 8000 port, this right here, it'll get redirected as the home for this right here. So we're good to go. We'll move it on to the next. Just finished number step seven. It took a long time. Uh, for step seven, I had to create a login function. And I first had to, in my apps accounts, I had to go to my, I had to first create a forms.py file and create a class, which in order to create the login function, I had to do a username and password for my form field. And then I take that login form and I'm going to import that into, or I already imported it into my views.py where I created a function. And this, I would say, actually took the longest. I didn't actually know how to do this aspect to um, doing a post method for my function. And so I had to look at this up, but essentially it allows me once I can, for me to authenticate the user by just comparing and making sure the username matches the username and the password matches the password. And then after I created this function, I then put it into my URL pathway under login. And then I then had to go back into the overall project URL and put that with accounts since that's the name of the app. And then I lastly created a login.html with the proper formatting for forms that creates all the security parameters. And I'm left with this. So once I input into my address bar, the word login and forward slash, this is what I have. So keep plugging on there. Step number eight, I had to add to my login function that it's required. So in order to do that, I had to import a login required from the Django contribution authentication decorator. So I'm getting that, those two parts, right? and then add the decorator at login required just above my function and then also change to make sure that my receipt is being filtered where the purchaser equals um, the user the requested user um, all right moving on okay for this feature we are what what exactly are we doing <laughs> i just did it i gotta remember what i did <laughs> i know what i did uh, so i created a function in my accounts app in the views.py folder, I created a function that allows uh, the user to log out. So in order to do this, I had to add the import of logout to my Django contribution, contribute, authentication. I think that's what it stands for, the module itself. And this is the function I used for user underscore logout request. And it's redirecting back to the log in uh, URL. So after I built this function, I then made sure I added it to, to my URLs pathway right here under the name logout. Moving on. So for this section, I had to create a sign up form starting out with. So for that, I just went to the forms.py and created a sign up form right here. It's included a username, password, and confirm the password. Then from there, upon doing the class creation, I then I took it to the views folder and created this beautiful function to sign up a user in which if the password does confirm and matches, it redirects it to the home page. If it doesn't, uh, they respond with a message that the password does not match. And it then pulls up and renders a signup.html, which before I created the HTML signup page, I first registered it on the pathway called signup, then created the signup page itself. Lovely right here. And let me pull up what I have so far. So as you can see, this is the signup page. You can click on uh, these buttons upon, um, well, <laughs> definitely can <laughs> once I start my server. So you can see where I'm currently at right now. And pulling it up, dragging it over. So for example, if I enter my login information, enter takes you here you can then log out so that's what i have now created this is the last update for tonight and i'll finish the rest tomorrow so this is uh the 11th step that i've completed now for this i was asked to create a receipts form so first what i had to do is create a forms folder in the receipts app part of my django project and this would document and show the vendor the total the tax the date, the category, and the account as far as what is in the form that you're going to be creating. So upon creating this form, 
I then inserted this class receipt form into my views by first making sure I'm importing my receipt form that I just created. And I'm going to then, or then already did, was create a function called create receipt. And the directions I was given was uh, for the person that's creating the receipt, they still have to be logged in. So that's why you are seeing the at logged in underscore required. That is a decorator, which means for this person has to be signed, logged in, signed in, logged in, whatever, in order for them to be able to have access to this function. So if the function works out and is good, everything gets filled out, it'll direct them right back to the homepage or else it takes them to the create.html, which I created here. But before I show that, you have to register the link or the URL path. And that's where create forward slash and create receipt. That's what that represents. And it takes you to this page right here. Create, create HTML. So upon uh, my server's already running, so uh, I'll show you what it looks like here. So if I change my web address to create, it takes you to create receipt. And now I can create a receipt. Okay, on to step 12, but that'll be in a tomorrow video. So I'll be wearing something different. Ciao, ciao for now. Okay, so for this next step, I created two additional functions for list views, and those are to display the expense category and the account models that I created here. So I first had to import both of these into my views, seen here. And then additional request that is being asked is not only you know, does the user have to be logged in in order to see these, but also I need to make sure that they're, that I'm filtering the data for only the current user. And that's done using the filter method and setting the owner equals the request.user. Once I created these two functions, I then registered them in my URL pathway in my urls.py folder seen here. And then lastly, creating two new list.html in their respective folders being in the accounts folder templates and the expense dot uh, expense category filter under templates so for this step number 13 i had to create a create a category function and i'm modeling it after the same format for when i create a receipt shown here so basically essentially i just copy this paste it here and I tweaked the model instance, which previously was receipt. Now I changed it to category and I had to create a new form called categories form shown here in the forms.py folder right here. And I just had to add the field names and also import my expense category from my receipts.models. And also what I had to adjust is just to redirect to the category list URL shown right here. And upon finishing this function, I also created a new HTML for expense categories at the create.html and then registered it on my URL, URL patterns, pathway. And now I'm able to add new categories. So right now you see, um, this is an old one. Let's add a new one right now, real quick. So we're going to go to uh, the right address, which is just create um, But let me turn my server on And we'll go back to this URL and let's just enter in the word tango and now we have a new category Okay, so for this step, I added another feature, which is the, the user has the ability now to create an account shown here. Um, so being able to generate this name and number for the account itself. So in order to do so, I had to first create a form in my forms.py folder, class name called account form, and then give it the fields of name and the number. From here, I then took this account form, I imported it into my views folder right here. I had a space right there for formatting. Um, and then I just basically recopied this function and tweaked it just a little bit. So again, the user has to be logged in in order to create the account. And then upon the create the account form being saved, it's gonna then gonna redirect back to that account list that I just showed you on my web browser. And then I then had to create a create.html 
in the accounts template shown right here as I'm hovering. And then I had to register the URL accounts forward slash create with the name create account. And here is my create.html for the account. And let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. So let's just enter in into my web bar address create. And let's do another test. So let's do salsa. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the count for salsa. And there you go. Okay, this is the last step that I just completed. And that was essentially, not essentially, it was absolutely taking all of the URLs, not all of them, but the, the directions were to in my HTML file, like my main HTML file, whether it's my base HTML or just like the home HTML file, insert a nav bar with three pathways being the create categories, the expense categories, the uh, create receipt and create account and making sure that when I log in, that specific user will only see their specific information and not the information of another user. So what I did in my base HTML is I included, um, if the user is authenticated, there'll be a message saying hello, and then they'll have the ability to log out. They'll have the ability to create their own account or create an account, create accounts. They'll have the ability to create an expense category and they'll have the ability to create receipts. So my server is running right now at the moment. So let's see what that has to look like. So let's go ahead and log in. So I have two accounts and we're gonna do Xander and we're going to do Salsa. So the first one, Xander. And the password I always use for this is Santa Rosa de Cabal, the town I'm living in right now. <laughs> and it's always hard to type when you're talking. Uh, I think it's actually lowercase, that's why. Okay. Okay, so here, let's go ahead and create an account. Just call it fish. <laughs> okay, so it's been added to my accounts there. Let's go ahead and create an expense category. Let's call it fishy. Um, yep, okay, now it's been added and let's create a receipt. The vendor is going to be shop of Jesus. Put some random numbers in. And let's just go ahead and put it in here. Okay, there we go, shop of Jesus, perfect. Now let's go ahead and log out and let's do it in another user. This user is Salsa. Password one, two, three, and look at that. These are different vendors that I inputted. We can um, input it right now so you can see for certain that I will not see the information of Xander. Let's just do shop, uh, all in uppercase, um, Jim Carrey. Carrey, Carrey. Um, numbers, today's date, just put it in different categories and let's create and there you go. This is all the information stored with the one specific user salsa and not Xander. So that is how you do some backend magic with Django with the links and storing database with two different users. Now moving on to submitting the project. So stay tuned for that. Who is hanging out there? Miss Ninja. Okay, this is the last check-in for this project. So what you're seeing right now is just me sharing a little of my GitLab, all the commits I've made. Uh, clicking right now, and you can see I did 16 commits uh, for each different section or step for this Django two-shot project. I'm quite happy with how it turned out, uh, as well as it offered a lot of great insight for just understanding the bigger Django, Django frame um framework django frame framework django web framework there we go <laughs> so what you're seeing right now is actually a test uh, that's built into the hack reactor course and you can see my score is a 1.0 which 1.0 essentially is like 100 percent 
There was 112 tests built in. Doesn't mean by any means the code is perfect, but it's the predetermined tests that were built in to just make sure you're following the right, correct steps. So with that, signing off. I'm glad you enjoyed. Ciao, ciao.